Widely speculated as the greatest Sonic game of all time, it's easy to see why. With a superb soundtrack, tight level designs, and excellent replay value. But is this the same game we grew up loving? Although it doesn't look it, it's no port. It's a bona fide recreation with a brand new physics engine built from the ground up. Added to this, Sega has pulled out all the stops by including Miles Tails Prowler as a playable character in both the English and Japanese original soundtracks, as well as leaderboard support and achievements. But is it worth your Microsoft points? Sonic CD can be played in two ways. If you want, you can speed through levels as fast as you can, paying no mind to your surroundings, or you can look a little deeper and discover the secrets the game has to hide. Each zone contains time warps that when used drastically change the layout of the level. This means that each individual zone has four different layouts. Combine this with Robo machines and Metal Sonic holograms, and you've got some serious replay value. In terms of what's new, the game feels a little different this time around. The physics have been completely redone, meaning Sonic can jump higher and move a little faster. The Sonic 2 spin dash has also been added to remedy the horrible one from the original, but the changes aren't all good. The game has gone back to having the time works take that extra second and a half, meaning some of us speedrunners are going to have to get used to different paths. Also, the hit detection on crushes is just broken. I've been crushed standing right next to a block, waiting for it to move up so many times. The special stages also take some getting used to, since they now run at a steady frame rate. Once you've completed the game, Tails is unlocked for you to play as. At first he plays the same as Sonic, albeit without a peel out, but if you look a little closer, you'll notice his flying ability is particularly game-breaking. In fact, it makes most of the bosses seem like child's play, not that that's not already easy to do. Sega was very secret about the soundtrack to Sonic CD, originally stating that it would only include the Japanese soundtrack. Luckily, they had a change of heart, and the US and Japanese soundtracks are both included and switchable at will. Although disappointingly, it seems Sega couldn't get the rights to the Japanese vocal songs, despite snippets of the vocal songs being played in the in-game levels. Sonic CD has aged rather well. It still looks good, even by today's standards, particularly if you have the settings set to smooth. There's always an incredible amount of color and detail on screen, and since each level has four layouts, they each get different weather and themes as well. Take, for instance, an industrialized level. If you were to go back to the past in it, you would find that the level layout is now altered to a more nature theme. It's level design like this that makes Sonic CD the cult classic that it is today. Sonic CD is, and will always be, the best Sega CD game out there. And this recreation of it shows why. The soundtrack is still amazing by today's standards, and having a past, present, future, and good future layout for every level was a genius idea. So what is Sega charging for this masterpiece? 400 Microsoft points. That's right, 5 bucks. I know, I was surprised too. Think of it this way, would you rather have a slice of pizza and a Pepsi, or this cult classic? Credit must go to Christian Whitehead for his amazing physics engine developed for Sonic CD. Hopefully the next downloadable Sonic game will use it. Sonic 4 Episode 2, I'm looking at you.